Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey, everybody. Good evening, everybody. And welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. So remember that monster sell-off yesterday on the close, right? If you blinked, you kind of missed it. Remember that one? Yeah, me either. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, we woke up this morning. Uh, yesterday, every chart, when we were doing the update, every chart was literally in the middle of their channels. Uh, and I was waiting for, anticipating kind of a a very slow, lackluster day of stocks trading in their channels. And when you woke up this morning, that sell-off never happened. It, it just absolutely was a figment of everybody's imagination. And apparently, right, the news that they ran with yesterday, that mRNA, right, Moderna was sold the rally, that, it, again, nobody even, even thought about uh, mRNA yesterday. Nobody thought about it this morning. But yet again, they're getting, the outlets are getting so weak as far as you know pinpointing the directional bias of the market they just have nothing left to talk about guys stop reading these financial outlets they're journalists uh as, as far as trading goes it's it's a it's a it's a very very small conversation okay they look at macro headlines they look at the scoreboard and again the bottom line of what is happening here is the most amazing uh continuation of the George Costanza market, right? If you've been watching this video for the last uh, week or so, this is what it is. It's the George Costanza market. Nothing makes sense anymore. The bulls are just absolutely in control. Uh, even the weak names, when you try to get a short on them, and it was you know, a pretty good short today on Netflix. We'll get into the individual pivots in a second, but it, it's absolutely incredible how impressive this rally is. And you almost have to say to yourself, man, if there was no COVID, right? If there was no economic closure, literally for two months, where the hell would the Dow be? 50,000, 80,000? Like what is stopping this market? And again, if you combine how impressive the market is and how they continue to discount companies, giving them a huge mulligan. For example, Expedia, right? Came out, what a terrible quarter. Horrible quarter, right? Everybody knew they were going to come out with a horrible quarter. The stock is surging after hours. Again, this is a market that's discounting bad news. Uh, it's being fueled by day, day, day by day headlines of slowly but surely uh, a plan for reopening the government, reopening uh, the way of life. And little by little, it's very, very tough. Uh, to be a bear in this market for for more than 30 minutes again it's it's an incredible it's an incredible combination of the fed pumping stimulus and again if you're a trader and you're suffering in this market don't blame the fed okay don't blame the fed don't blame the algos don't blame the market makers right don't don't get a crush on why there's a problem okay if you know they're pumping money into the fed what why go against that trend right think about that if somebody's constantly backstopping over and over and over again again why are you taking the other side of that equation so if you think about the discounting right the discounting of bad news the discounting of of, of earnings uh the opening up of america and actually uh the world right now it's really is incredible how strong this market is and the more incredible part is nobody knows when this market is going to stop surging and every single day you're seeing the same leaders over and over again. We've been, you know, we've been on Amazon for five days, you know, for five days, ever since, uh, ever since it broke out out of this, let me say five days, two weeks, uh, ever since it closed over this 2362, I said, this thing is 2,500 today and da, 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 2,500 right on the dot. But again, it's not just Amazon. Okay. If you look and you know, look at all the players that are continuously really, really benefiting from what's going on. All these online companies, shop, again, close the 52 high. There's a pretty good pivot on this as well. Too low, okay, continues to go higher. Uh, stone throws away of just literally a week worth of consolidation about to take 52-week highs. Zoom that everybody's counting out, right, and say, well, 
after everybody goes back to work, Zoom is, you know, going back to where it came from. Okay, Zoom is, what, five bucks away uh, from, from breaking out. So it's incredibly important to understand what is happening right now. This, is, this market is an absolute runaway train. Now, again, can you get some shorts in this market, some value plays here and there? Again, we've been kind of demonstrating that for the last several days. This week, uh, there was a beyond reversal short-term reversal, but again, a beyond reversal. There was a too low reversal from that 187 level all the way down to 180. There was a, a really good, in my opinion, a pretty good pivot today on Netflix, which I caught a pretty decent amount on. Um, you know, beautiful pivot on Netflix as well, but that's where it stops, okay? There is no two, three, four day uh, continuation moves. These things are incredibly aggressive right now. Uh, buyers are coming in on every single dip level, and again, it's very, very tough uh, to be a bear in this take for more than 30 minutes. Again, it, it, it very, it's it, kudos to the bulls. Again, I'm, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear. Um, you know, I trade channels long, short, doesn't make a difference. But I have to acknowledge, and I always, and I always say this, it, life feels better when there's a bull market. I think all, everybody can, can agree with that. People are happier. Um, there's a feel good in the air despite what's going on in the world. So the fact that the market is incredibly strong right now makes things a lot easier to bear, especially for a lot of people who are a lot of people who are trapped uh, at home. But the most important part is again, slowly but surely, whether you again agree or disagree of the opening, right, of the opening uh, of the world of America. Again, we will see if there's a 2.0 uh, in this uh, coronavirus uh, horrific pandemic. And again, unfortunately, I think there will be. But again. You know, it's all up to the individual to say what's you know what's worth it. Is my health more important than my financial well-being? Again, it all it, it's all different. Again, it, it's much easier for me to say that because again, I don't have to leave my house. But again, uh, I'm very sympathetic of somebody who needs a job that has a job that has to leave their house uh, to feed their kids. So it's very very important. Again, um, use prudent judgment, but again, at the same time, again, you have to feed your family. So bull market continues. Uh, very, very strong tape. Uh, the strong stocks continue to get stronger. But I, I thought that there was a, a pretty good amount of pretty decent pivots today. I, I do believe, in my opinion, and, th and this is where we, we know kind of a little bit of lesson for today. I think the most important pivot here was this Alibaba pivot, right? So here was the pivot. And I really liked this pivot last night. Uh, I liked it this morning. So here was the pivot. I, I want to show you uh, what I'm talking about. So Alibaba, there was a beautiful, beautiful channel here. Everybody see this channel here? Gorgeous channel. So I tweeted out pre-market and I said, look, uh, 2060 needs to build. It keeps on getting rejected there, right? So here was the channel on, let me just make this a little, little tighter so you guys can see. So this whole channel here, and I, and I thought the stock had a shot to get maybe to 222 for a trade. So it finally gets above the 22060 level and it starts going higher. Forget about this for a second. So it starts going higher and it goes to uh, 2115, right? Just, just whatever it is. It went to 21 area. So I got long the stock, okay? And I, I got long in the low 90s. So I got long the stock. And the one thing that I always know, the most aggressive volume is always going to come uh, on whole numbers, okay? Because again, uh, retail is entering, retail is exiting. Uh, pension funds, mutual funds, uh, they're all building positions. Usually you're not going to get like, you know, you're not going to get a David Einhorn to build this position at uh, $220.37. He's not going to tell his sales trader, hey, you, you sit there and bid for 4 million shares of that price. It's usually going to be at a whole number. So you're going to get your most liquidity there. You're going to get your most aggression there. And I always said, if, if you could quickly tell in the first couple of minutes, who has control of the pivot, right? Who has control of that le level of area of interest in the first couple of minutes? And the most important part is if you're along the stock, okay, and the sellers keep on rejecting that whole number, you literally have two minutes to figure out who has control. If not, if you overstay your welcome, something usually bad is going to happen. Not this bad, and we'll get to the news in a second, but you're usually going to wind up losing money. And again, we're not in the hoping business. We're not in the praying business. We're not in the, you know, let me guess where the stock is going to close business. We're trying to see once a pivot gets triggered and once there's a second entry for confirmation, we're trying to win our interval. That's it. Whether our interval goes up 10 cents, 50 cents, 
$12, okay, or anything in between, our judgment is to make sure that number one, we're safe, and number two, that the area of interest keeps on getting built upon in that directional bias. So if you're going long, obviously you want to see it over the whole number. If you're going short, obviously you want to see the directional bias uh, being built under the whole number. So it was very, very important. And I kept on seeing, you know, I kept on seeing good buyers uh, prior to the pivot. And we started seeing really good call buying coming. I saw the June 45 calls coming in. Um, I saw the weekly uh, 227.50 call buyers coming in. And so I said, all right, this thing is going to go. It's acted well uh, the whole day. And it, it, it triggered. I, I got along the stock. It only went up like literally like 20, 25 cents. And I sat there and I go, there's just something wrong. There's just something wrong. There's just something wrong. There's just something wrong. And, and again, the most mature thing you can do and I've, I've been saying this for, for years and years and years. It's, it's not about being right in a trade, okay? It's about being smart, being um, logical, okay, and using common sense. So when you see tons of stock being traded in the area and the position of the trade, right, the position and price action of the trade doesn't go in your direction, there's a problem. And the, the hardest part, unfortunately, for a lot of new traders to do is get rid of a good hand, okay? In my opinion, this was a really good hand. This was a perfect range. Uh, I traded it yesterday. It was a really good move yesterday. I loved what I was, I was seeing today. I thought this was a really good hand. In my opinion, I was holding at least jacks or better, right? It's so all you could ask for. The only reason it's not a king or a queen or an ace because the measured potential is only about $1.30. So it wasn't like a monster $10 trade. And then, then, then you'd have to say, you know, I'm holding aces. So I, I, I felt that I had face cards, okay? And the most important part is I just couldn't get that order flow. We couldn't watch that order flow. And this is why we always tell new traders, you don't need to be in a trade to appreciate order flow. It doesn't cost you any money to watch and sit at screen time to watch order flow. Watch the level two. Understand why there is no appreciation of price action. And once you get that understanding, and obviously it gets easier and easier to read order flow, read the tape as you're knee deep in the game years and years and years. But this was an important part of, 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 of what we do. Uh, this is an incredibly important part of my career because again, at this juncture, after two decades, it's, it's easier for me to understand that there's something wrong with the pivot versus a person who's trading for two years, two weeks, two months. And again, all they're looking at is buys and sells, buys and sells, where there's absolutely no reason anything behind it. So I, I, after two, three minutes, I just said, you know what? It's taking way too long. The sellers are controlled at $27. Let me sell it. You know, I got out of it, break even a cup of coffee, right? And literally five minutes later, you see... 215 put buyers come in, right? 215, uh, 210. And then all of a sudden, again, they knew. Guys, remember, somebody always knows something. There was obviously a seller in the crowd that knew there was news coming out. And the news that came out was uh, the Senate passed, I'm reading this, that's why I'm looking down. Uh, the Senate passed a bill that's basically threatening the listings, okay, of Chinese companies in the future. What they didn't say in that PR was that their listing eligibility would only come into question if they lacked some sort of non-compliance or accounting issues for three years. We all know Alibaba is not gonna have any listing issues. The company's a monster. But again, it doesn't make a difference. This is a headline-driven market. It's shoot first, ask questions later. And you just saw these really ugly moves, just destruction moves in Alibaba, uh, in Baidu, right? Baidu as well. So again, you know, it's not about being right, folks. I, I, I have been saying this to new traders all the time. I would rather be wrong, okay, and be safe than sorry on my read than be wrong, right? Then be wrong and then be financially uh, financially implicated in, 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 the overall, uh, in the overall result of the trade. And it's just so hard for new traders to get rid of good cards because they love the trade. They love the stock. They love the setup. It's a 10-star setup. It's a four-star setup. And something in the crowd, whether it's a reload seller, a headline that's imminent, that's not being disseminated, whatever the case may be, is stopping the progression from price per share. And when you see a stock stall out, guys, again, I always say this, lead with your shield, not with your chin. Again, it's not about being right. The best trade, okay, is the one that you take back your money from, from the middle of the table and move on to something else. Again, the value in your account is not the money you make. It's the money you save. So I personally thought that was the most important uh, read of the day.
And obviously the stock got absolutely destroyed. Uh, if you look at the rest of the pivot, some some pretty good stuff here uh, today. Um, I actually lost a couple of a uh, little less than a couple of bucks on Tesla. I love this setup, man. I really did. Um, this is actually I think this was my first trade of the day. I think it was my first trade of the day. Uh, Tesla rejected eight. Or was it my second trade? Excuse me, it was my second trade of the day. Tesla uh, rejected 822 pre market again and needs to reclaim 823. So I got long Tesla. And I thought, this is it, man. This thing is going to explode. I got long Tesla. And again, this was another perfect example. It's actually two examples today, uh, Tesla and Alibaba. The only, Unfortunately, the only one on Tesla, I lost some money on Tesla. It was about, about $1.70. But the point is, it ran up, it exploded through the range, and it came right back into my entry. And I was like, well, something's wrong here. Um, again, something's wrong here. And it, I gave Tesla a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes. And I finally said, you know what? Let me get out of the trade. So I wound up losing $1.70. And the funny thing is the stock came in like, like $9, $10. So again, guys, don't be deer in headlights. You have to be proactive. And there's some of the trades that you love, again, and I love Tesla. I trade Tesla pretty much every day, uh, sometimes two, three times a day. Uh, you got to get rid of good hands. And this is a perfect example of how you get rid of uh, good hands when it doesn't feel right, okay, and there's a reload seller and there's something gets rejected too quickly, you got to wash your hands and move forward. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, other than that, some pretty good, uh, pretty good moves. You can see here, uh, shop uh, seven sixty six needs to build. Uh, big move on shop. Uh, closed right at uh, fifty two week highs. Again, yesterday was that big, big move. Uh, so here is a seven uh, seven sixty six, and you know the first move uh, went up about eight dollars, came back in, reclaimed that number, and closed right above uh, the fifty two week high. Of 775. This thing looks like it's going to 800, 810 if it confirms uh, tomorrow's price action. Uh, Boeing obviously never got to uh, the 137 level. Uh, NOW I still like. Uh, it trades kind of funky. Uh, there's really no, there's really no aggression in this trade. But I think they're going to pump this thing into into the end of the week. Maybe tomorrow, Friday. Uh, this is now the highest close. I like the 390 area close right at 390. This is the highest close. In this whole formation, maybe it gets going tomorrow. Okay, there's still 400 call buyers all over the place, so uh, let's definitely keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. You know, maybe above today's highs, uh, maybe it's after it cracks 400, could extend to 413. I still like this trade there. Uh, uh, Roku, uh, let's see here. Uh, no, Roku never got up to uh, 120, 75, 121. I still like that area. Again, Amazon is still a beast. Uh, 2476 needs to build. Uh, Amazon closed right at the highs of the day, right at 2,500. So beautiful move. Here's a 2,475 uh, right here. 2,475 pre-market. It challenged that, went right into the 2,290s, came in and obviously uh, closed at the highs of the day. So big move there. Uh, yeah, so this is the trade on Alibaba. I bought it. I gave it two, three minutes. You know, took a cup of coffee, literally uh, break even trade there. Um, you know, again, you got to make good reads and you got to be uh, very proactive. You can't be a deer in headlights. Uh, too low, again, continues to be a monster. Uh, 188.75, 189 uh, needs to build. So here is too low, right? Here is too low. Here is the 189.75, uh, 189.75, 190. Just exploded, absolutely exploded. Uh, went to almost 193. And this is like literally one day away for maybe testing uh, all-time highs again. Again, this is a monster, an absolute monster. Uh, Zoom, again, very strong name, 174 needs to build. Here was Zoom. Uh, I still like Zoom for tomorrow. It closed pretty much at the high of the day. Um, you know, ran up about you know, a little less than two bucks. I still like it for tomorrow. If it clears out this channel, again, you might run uh, to the 181 level. So I still like Zoom for tomorrow. Uh, BYND, quick pop here, uh, quick pop at the open, 143 needs to build. Here was BYND, right? Here's the 143, right? Here's the 143, right over here, this whole 143 area. Uh, went to almost 145, so nice move on BYND. Uh, Amazon, just a beast, 2490 first supplies, take sales. Uh, BYND, take sales. Uh, NOW, again, only went up like four or five points, but I still like it. I still think that it's gonna go higher. Uh, too low take on the way. Uh, yeah, here's here's my you know here was my better better trade of the day. Uh, Netflix uh, 450. It keeps on holding. And again, this market it's really really tough to get value plays on the short side. But I keep on saying that five day moving average is a monster monster area. So Netflix 450 uh, keeps holding. If it builds below, it can flush. And Netflix got killed. Um, really nice move. I thought it was gonna get down to 40. 
Uh, so here's the five day. It lost the five day. I thought it was going to get down to 43. It traded down to 44. So big move, you know, you know, big move on, on Netflix. Uh, definitely helped things out uh, today as well. A beautiful move. Uh, I like I like Roku. And by the way, it, it never obviously uh, triggered the 114. But if this thing starts building 114, it's going to get hit. Uh, BCRX, um, I think it went to 560. I don't know what the hell is going on there today. Uh, Tesla, nothing yet. I think that might have been it for the day. Oh, yeah, there was one more pivot. One more pivot. Under 446, should see 443. It actually went down to 444. That was a second, uh, second continuation move. And Amazon, 25 on 100 on deck. So I, I think going into tomorrow, uh, look, I, I think you have to give uh, the bulls still uh, the benefit of the doubt. I, I did see some softening today. Uh, and some names, uh, again, is it profit taking? Is just a little bit of a res day? We'll see. But again, you could clearly tell the bulls are incredibly in control. Um, nobody knows where this train is going to stop. But the most important part is don't be naive. Okay, they could always pull the plug. They could always pull the rug. And the last thing you want to do is, you know, is be surprised by it. Again, always make sure you have one eye on the futures when you're putting on positions. Make sure there's no significant pull. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.